Today we'll be installing the Lazy NVim package manager for NeoVim and we'll be configuring a few plugins. Along the way, of course, we'll explain everything that's going on so that you don't have to worry about not understanding anything. And as we get going, we'll introduce a few key concepts that are important to understanding how does NeoVim find plugins, what really are plugins, and all of those goodies. So before we go too far into that, we need to install lazy nvim so you can just go to this link if you'd like and on this link it tells you hey here's how we're going to be able to install it so we'll follow the structured setup and we'll use this as we go forward uh, this will let us keep our plugin configuration separate for different plugins uh, which will allow you i think to follow along quite a bit better so it says first to put this require for config.lazy you could put anything you want in here um, i'll go with this same idea for config.lazy the thing you might be confused about here, if you remember, require is kind of like the import function inside of Lua, which says, hey, find a file that matches this idea of config.lazy. Now, you might think what you should do is just create a config.lazy.lua file. That's not what it is. The dots are sort of like folders. And then the second thing you might think here is, oh, hmm, maybe I should be putting this in config slash lazy.lua. Almost. The only difference is NeoVim only looks for Lua files to require inside of folders that have Lua as sort of like its top level folder. And those folders need to be in the runtime path. Now we say, what's the runtime path? Well, we can actually see what that is right now by doing echo NVim list runtime paths. And it tells you it's looking more, hey, I've got our config. And in this case, I'm using my NVim example. It'll probably just say NVim for you. There's a sort of the installed NeoVim runtime, some installed NeoVim pack sort of ideas, and the uh, basically like NVim folder that also things get installed to. So any in any of these places, if there's a Lua folder, NeoVim will look inside of there to load Lua files. So what we need to do is inside of our config folder, we need to make a new uh lua folder so in all cases i'll just do make der lua here and then if we look at this again we'll see lua and then we need to do basically make der lua and we'll say custom or uh, in this case we said config we'll say config that's fine and then we need to do e lua config lazy dot lua okay so this is basically the file that we said hey um i want to require this so if we put in here print this is getting required and we save this file, we exit everything, and we open up NeoVig again, you'll see we'll get this, this is getting required. So if we edit our Lua custom config lazy, and we go back to here, we can copy paste in the sort of bootstrapping stuff that we needed from lazy. Uh, let's go over each of the things that happen here, because a bad strategy for you using NeoVim is just copy paste and never read anything. That's a bad plan, okay? Don't do that. So here's what we're doing here. This is going to, first, it says, I need to find my lazy path. Now, Vim FN standard path. We haven't talked a lot about this. FN stands for functions. These are functions that have existed inside of Vim, and they're already built in like Vim script land. That means we can call them with echo, standard path data, like this, and this will return some path that follows the xdg config directories for data. So this says, hey, uh, wherever we have our data path, I also want to look for lazy, lazy nvim. And then it checks, hey, does this file um, sort of stat or does it have, it, it does it exist at all? That's what this line does. And if it doesn't exist, what it's going to do is it's going to try and clone that uh, repo into that path. Okay. And if that does, if that errors for some reason, then it's going to say, hey, I really don't know what to do. Uh, let's exit this program and get out of here. Okay. Uh, in our case, hopefully it's going to actually work. And then, and then right here, this is a very important aspect. This RTP, you could also write as runtime path. And this says, hey, put lazy into the runtime path for NeoVim. Okay. So this is telling NeoVim to look for files, right? To look for files here. Okay. And we need this because we're about to require lazy, right? So this needs us to be able to find some lazy.lua file somewhere on our uh, file system is not going to search every directory on the computer. It's only going to search 
uh, the files that we have for runtime path. So the thing that we can remember here is if we look at these runtime paths here, this is going to be different. This is going to be different when we reopen this file. And I'm going to comment out this and this and this. We don't actually need these right now, and we'll come back to them in a sec. So if we open up NeoVim again, we should see, you might see something like it's re-downloading this. You might see a little messages that tell you that this is working or not. But if we check now our runtime pass, and I recommend you do this as well, you should see right here, lazy slash stream. So we've now started looking for, and right here, local share and example, lazy, lazy envim uh, right there. Okay. We've changed the runtime paths. How did that happen? Well, when we open our config lazy Lua file here, you'll see that we actually change the runtime path. We prepend this lazy path to it. So this is how we're able to then require lazy and have it start loading. The thing that it recommends to do inside of here is to run check health lazy. And I do just feel like I should mention, like, I'm the guy that wrote check health for the first time. So it's just kind of fun little factoid for you. You know, if you like that, you can say that's cool. So let's run check health. And we can run check health and lazy here. And this will say, hey, look, okay, it's good. We have a good version of Git. We don't have any packages and we don't have old uh, Packer stuff that work together here. There's Lua rocks, but we're not going to use that. So that's okay. Uh, so we can quit out of everything. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to get a new color scheme. Okay. So the way that we're going to do that is I'll show you the sort of like simplest way to start adding plugins uh, to your setup here which is if we go down to this spec, we can say something like, uh, I want to import here. I'll actually just show you. We want Tokyo Night color scheme. So if you want this, you can go to uh, Tokyo Night right here and install it. And I think it looks pretty nice. So if we, we can just yank this line here and paste it in. Uh, but basically what this does is this says, hey, here's the spec. These are sort of like plugins that I want to install. This says right here, here is uh, sort of like the URL. Effectively, you can do a full URL if it's not a GitHub plugin, but if it's on GitHub, then we can do that. And then we can say config, and this function runs when this plugin is loaded. So let's install it and see what happens, and then we'll talk about this, okay? So we're gonna do this, and now we'll open this up. Now it's going to install, and look, right away, our colors are all different, right? So this looks completely different than what we had before. I think the colors are quite a bit nicer, quite a bit uh, better contrast and everything. So I think that this looks pretty good. What did that actually do, right? What's going on there? Well, what happens is we have local share, and this is probably NVIM example for you. This installs a new Tokyo Night.envim plugin with which is basically just the cloned repo. So if you want to know what that plugin does, you can just literally look at the repo. That's what's getting cloned down. And if we check our runtime paths now, you'll see right here is Tokyo Night. So lazy, the simplest thing that it does is it downloads a Git repo, puts that onto your runtime path and then allows you to easily run some code to actually load and configure that plugin. Let's pick one that doesn't just call color scheme, but has a little bit of setup with that plugin itself. The one that I want to do for this is mini NVIM. Mini NVIM is sort of a conglomeration of a bunch of different plugins. And in this case, we're just going to do a really simple one for the status line. Uh, and so I'll just quick show you this. But for this case, we're actually going to... Um, not put that directly into the um, configuration itself. Instead, we're going to use uh, what you saw initially, which is this idea of import specs. And I'm going to put mine in uh, custom.plugins because that's where I prefer mine to go. And so if we quit out of here and we look at our Lua custom, uh, we, we have config right now. Maybe we'll change it to uh, config. We'll follow the same sort of idea that we had here before. I'm going to do maker config plugins. Okay, so we made a new folder here. And let's um, let's edit this. This is going to error because we, we lied the last time that we did this because I said I wanted it there. This is actually custom. Instead of custom, we'll call it config.plugins. Let me just yank this again here. And now when we open this, it 
it will error because I didn't put a comma here, which is an important part. Okay. So now it says, Hey, there's no, there aren't any things in config.plugins. This is probably the error you get the first time that you paste in the config for lazy. So let's make one. If we go to config plugins, we can press percent inside of here to create a new plugin. We'll maybe do a different directory uh, sort of navigator later, but let's call this mini.lua. Inside of here, I can paste in what I had before. And once again, you'll see this same idea of here's where I want to get a new file. And then here is where I'm going to configure it. And we're going to require many status line and we'll just say status line setup. So once this file's written and I reopen NeoVim, you'll see, hey, it's working to pull in the new things. It's going to install those. That's great. And now I have a much nicer, I think, status line that tells me, hey, I'm in normal mode. If I press I, I'm in insert mode. If I go to the command line, I'm in command mode. So I think that this is like a little bit nicer of a setup. And so that's basically everything we need to know to get started with plugins. Um, the thing that I sort of just want to walk you through again here is we have this config lazy. You can directly put specifications inside of here to configure things. Or if you want to start breaking things out into different files, you can use an import style specification, which tells lazy, hey, I would really like it if you looked for inside of config.plugins for any files inside of here that are Lua files. If there are any files, each one returns a list of specifications, right? So here's our list. We could put optionally another um, plugin inside of here if we wanted to, you know, like hello slash world with some config function here and do something like this. That would be fine. It can return a list of plugins. Um, and so that's sort of the very basics of what's going on with lazy and getting those loaded. And once again, if we check our runtime paths, you'll see now that mini and vim is happening. So that's sort of everything that the package manager does. It's not really that magic. It just adds new folders for NeoVim to search for. And it usually downloads something from the internet to get those. You can, you know, do all sorts of fancy things with specifying dependencies and locking to particular versions and all that other stuff. That's sort of uh, adjacent to what we need to think about for today. But then after it adds that to the runtime path, most package managers then have some hook to allow you to easily configure these. The reason that I like this style is because we can easily do something like enabled is false turn this plugin off. And the next time I open NeoVim, you'll notice my status line is not set the way that it was before. So this makes it really easy in my mind, at least to, uh, to easily turn on or off plugins. If a plugin like breaks for some reason, or you're trying to figure out why it's not working, you can really easily turn them on or off. And then this configuration doesn't run at all which I think is really nice. So now my status line's back because I just said it enabled is true. So anyways, that's basically all you need to know in my opinion to get started with them. I would not particularly as a newer person go down the rabbit hole of like trying to lazy load every particular thing and like getting it per blah, blah, blah. Just don't install a thousand plugins and you'll be just fine. Luajit's fast, NeoVim's fast. Maybe your startup time might be 150 milliseconds, but like I promise you that there's more effective ways to spend your time when you're starting out with NeoVim than like min maxing your startup time. Don't do it. Don't post it to Reddit. Don't be so impressed because yours is so much faster than everybody. It doesn't matter. You're not saving any time at all. You're saving like two whole seconds a day. It's not worth it. Okay. Just learn the basics, understand the concepts, and then move on so you can actually, you know, obviously not ship, but like write more plugins, right? Okay. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you liked uh, this little intro to package managers and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.